<laughs> Depends how naughty you are. Emotional, damn it! Let's meet him and Zubin sir and find out what are the preps they are going to do to the bike before they start out on this ride. So, we are here with this motorcycle, great motorcycle, F850. Jagpreet is going to be riding out. So, we are going to run a few checks, pre-checks before what he needs to look into before he steps out. So, that's what we are going to do. Yeah. Let's look so at the first thing. things first is with your ignition, you switch on your ignition and we run a check on your electricals, whether all your indicators are functional because you're going to be on a highway, you're going to be fast, you're going to be overtaking. So make sure your headlight overtaking beam works, your passing beam, Understood. like this one here indicates. So just for straight, you can go from the front, make sure your indicators are functional, important on the highway. Thirdly, on extremely important because of truck travel you'll be riding a lot faster you'll be overtaking a lot of vehicles so bringing notice to the truck driver or the car driver is very important you think the horn is loud enough Something horn is loud enough works, for yeah. you to go also physically this bike is a brand new bike so you don't have yeah. to look much at at mechanical side of things yeah but what you can look at is a battery check on a normal motorcycle right. when you're doing an older motorcycle also just to know that your battery is working fine throughout the ride you should use your your horn once in a while just to check whether it's as powerful when you started or it's losing power so that gives you indication that you're losing battery power somewhere down the line makes sense that's a good way to check it thirdly coming back once you look up to all this mirror position everything once you're mm. sitting on your bike mm. importantly adjust it because you don't want to come up to an instance and then adjust it mm. so mm. you adjust that your clutch has to have a bit of play here just a little bit of free play like this. Yeah. This is absolute free play. So right. this is very important. It should mm. never be out tight. Right. So this free play always has to be there. Accelerator play is fine. Does not make a difference. It's not so critical unless you're on a racetrack. Like a guy like Mark will probably need a tighter one. But this play is still okay. Right. Brake pressure importantly. Check mm. that you have brake mm. pressure and it's not gone in mm. flat. So mm. you have a little bit of brake pressure. Right. This lever adjustment is completely and purely personal. Okay. So how much of leverage you want, if you're going to keep your finger between the levers or you're going to use one finger, two finger or full grab. This is all personal. This part is covered basically. Next when you go down to your motorcycle, I mean of course you have to have fuel in your tank when you're riding. So yep. you'll check or you get good fuel. So that, um, that's important. So fuel um, from, yeah. with this bike or bikes of this category, uh, what kind of fuel should I you be You can use in? regular fuel because these bikes are tuned for regular fuel. Right. But if you use a slightly higher octane, also won't really matter if you're riding continuously. But if I'm mixing fuel, so in mixing case I'm fuels will not make someone the difference. But so do don't that. go in for like a hundred octane fuel. Yeah, this yeah. bike is tuned for up to a 95 knot model. Understood. So just stay in that range only. Okay. I mean, com coming back to the bank, make sure your brake lights, tail lights. Of course, we checked indicators, yeah. but make sure your brake light works because when you brake, people should come in and see that your brake light is functional, because. When you're riding fast, these things have to work. So at least you're safer that way. You know you're covered. You can indicate to the guy behind you that you're braking in time. Understood. Yeah. Also, a bit of riding trip is when you're on the highway and you have a lot of traffic and you have people close to you, start braking early. Don't brake last minute because you need to warn the guy about the lights or you start flashing your light slightly. Just you don't have to press the brake really hard, but at right. least just so get it to saying, activate the switch. So you're saying hold a little brake before you actually stop? Yeah, just, just tap the brake, so the it lights up the rear, so it indicates to the guy that you're going to start braking. So he is also prepared for that, he is not, you know, the light will always catch your eye. So at least you're safer that way, it gives you the distance and you know, it's, it's always safer for you. Any tyre pre pressure preferences for the highway? Tyre so pressure, yes, because you'll be riding, depending on the weather. Yeah. Like on a cooler day where you're expecting rain, then the tyre pressure will not change much. So I'll be too up with luggage. But on a hot day, then yes, you need yeah. to check because you can pick up to 5 to 6 pounds of pressure from the ground when it's hot, when yeah, it's a hot day. We got news that the roads aren't 
the yeah the roads aren't very good from karada so onwards. then you go with a with your tires well uh, inflated so that in case you hit a bump you're safer from getting rim damage which you don't want because a bike like this rims are super expensive okay. we just checked there are about a lakh and 35 for the front rim okay. just one rim just one rim all right yeah leave them at home so, you have some impulse rim lying around no, so you have to really be in. careful on that <laughs> air pressure importantly yeah 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 makes sense yeah then especially when you're when you now also importantly if you are one up with luggage yeah then you have a suspension set up on your dashboard yes, right yes so you set it up a little stiffer yeah. and various things so you don't bottom it out fully yeah. as soon as you bottom out fully suspension has no place to collapse right that's when it will go full and will transmit all the bumps straight to the rider and to the pillion behind more over to the pillion because of the angle rider is still right above the shock yeah the pillion will get you'll feel the jolt you suggest it, like increasing the preload yeah you have to tighten the spring up slightly but also remember once you are single you have to go back to thing yeah. others it will be a speed too hard now specification on that also depends on your comfort zone where you want to ride how you ride how fast you ride how slow you go how much of off road you will do whether you will do any off road when you see speed breakers how do you react yeah 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 okay thirdly right. very very importantly when we see a speed breaker on the highway hmm. Let's just say we are doing the old Bombay Goa road. You hmm. do encounter speed breakers on the way. Yeah. Our first option is we go hard onto the brakes. Hmm. Now, because you're on the brakes, your suspension is already collapsed in the front. Importantly, you have to learn to release that brake before you hit the suspension. So you, your your suspension opens out, and there's place for the wheel to travel up and down. Right. So that reduces half the impact on your entire chassis, your suspension, your oil seals, and various other things. So that's a huge mistake we all make normally when we hit the brakes, and we stay on the brake till we hit the speed breaker. But you have to learn to release fractionally before, so your suspension is up, and you can go over the bump evenly, and there's place for it to move. Now that is human. error that we do because of fear and various thing we go on the back also if you see a really bad kind of a hole that you think if you're going to break into that hole does not make sense you might as well on some instances very debatable you can power it out if you can power it out power it out i mean obviously understanding the situation ahead right. the traction on the road and various yeah. things i think power out makes more sense for you so just a little bit on uh, that topic when uh, because i'm riding with a pillion hmm. um so does my riding behavior change and how does it need to change because i'm yes. used to riding solo by myself and see when you're solo you would probably just stand up and go over the bump yeah, but exactly. when you have a pillion you can't stand up but that also depends now do you have a top box if you have a have, top box uh, then there is less fear of the pillion because it's protected uh, he or she is protected because the box is behind but otherwise then you have to ride a little more carefully a little more cautious also make sure the pillion doesn't fall off the seat Yeah, because then it's a dead weight in the back, which becomes difficult. Or you need to strap the pillion to you. So I actually have been threatening her that I'm going to bungee her to me because she does fall off asleep a lot. So no. So importantly, even if you have just from your belt buckle from from the pillion to the rider belt buckle, you have a connection. Yeah. It still makes sense because purely because then you know okay, there's a reaction on the pillion coming, so yeah. you can react accordingly. Yeah. 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 But it's important to have that. Right. Or you ask the pillion to put their hands into your your jacket pocket and yeah. hold on to you, so you know of this moment because constantly your your hands are holding around your waist and you know you're safe for that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And the pillion is attached to you, yeah. so you can react as one piece. Yeah. Otherwise, it's always an opposite action that happens. It's a delayed action on the pillion to the rider. Right. Also, depending on how thin or thin or fat the person. Is. Right. The heavier the person, the more difficult is the adverse effect is more on that thing. Right. So it's important to know the pillion to understand the pillion and see. I have one question. Yes. Any you essentials can, you have to carry for this ride, like must have, good to have. Depends how naughty you are. Then I can give you some essential. Very naughty. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a brilliant question, actually. Hmm. So the smallest container claimed by the motorcycle industry to carry fuel is a condom. It holds up to right. two liters of fuel right. on an emergency. Right. But I mean, in India, they never let you fill it with a yeah, condom. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's on how good your convincing skills are and asking. Exactly. The guy But the I mean, uh, not really. You should just be look after your bike. You'll have less problem with it. But what you could carry is maybe an, a chain spray and it is small things that you can attend to your motorcycle once you stop somewhere. A small toolkit, extremely important. Leatherman, like how he's carrying, extremely important. protection wise as well as if he needs to service it like small things tighten up small yes. things 
maybe a punch on the tire, take something off the tire, zip ties. take the stones out. Zip ties? Zip ties absolutely important. Everybody must carry zip ties. Bungee cord, absolutely. Hmm. But zip ties are, like you said, you hit the nail. That you need. Yeah. Zip ties are extremely important for that time. So, hmm. that. Plus, you can carry a set of wet wipes, a small packet of wet wipes, in right. case you need to wipe your face, you need to wipe your visor, hmm. or clean up something, it's important. So, zip ties always are important. White wet wipes are always important to clean your face. But make sure you don't put in your eyes. Night riding, you have to be a little more careful because sometimes through forest area, you get small insects that go into your eyes. And then your eyes will become like potatoes. Hmm. So, it's always better to keep your visor shut. Be careful. Also, we had one bad experience where we saw a sudden swarm. So, we thought it was like a cloud, but it turned out to be small beads. Ooh. And they went all into the shirt and they bit and stuff like that. So, that's where you can panic. They hit your visor and they spattered all over. So, your vision is absolutely blocked. You have to be really careful about that. Right. But that's a very rare occasion that you'll get bees like that. But an attack of bees is dangerous. Water, you have to keep hydrating yourself when you're on your trip. Plus, also, when you stop, you need to see the yellowness on your pee. Hmm. If it's really yellow, is the first sign that you're dehydrating. Right. So you have to start drinking water. Keep drinking water because in any case when you're riding, you're going to dehydrate. Hmm. Thirdly, keep peeing, it's fine because you're just flushing the system out and drinking more water. Absolutely. But a little bit of electrol would help right. on the way in case... Stopping, what would be the ideal timeline or distance? To and that's stop? at your comfort level. That's at your comfort level. Depends from rider to rider how much his bum is getting sore or no. Pillion is comfortable cramping up or not. Mm -hmm. But if the longer you can go, it's always better. That multiple stops waste time because every, every time you stop, one smoke, one chai, one this, one that is always a delay in your trip. Try and club your stops with your fueling at the same time. Right. Get a pump close to a McDonald's or something, it, it just makes life easier. There's a loo as well, so mm -hmm. you can visit the loo as well. Guys, it's fine. Girls yeah, need to get a yeah, loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all discuss about riding the bike, but when it comes to braking, what is the things? Okay, so quick, at? quick check on the brakes. Now, when we when you look at the brakes here, I'm just going to use yeah. the light. So, so this is the the plate, the brake plate, and this inside that you see is the brake lining. We need to have like this pad is as good as new. Give it or take, it's got about five to seven percent wear. But you need to make sure this metal does not touch the disc here. This center part where I mark a little white should never get fully worn out for this plate to come and touch here. Because that means you have no brakes. And you have damage to the disc as well. So this is very important what you visually see that you have at least 2 mm of, on the minimum you have 2 mm of material left here. So you change it before that? Yeah, so you have up to, you can go down to 1 mm on this thing till the, where the white mark is, mm -hmm. but you should have at least that much before you step out on your right. So this is how you can visually see the rear ones, but we'll also go to the front for you to look at them. But then the line way, the line that you uh, no, made. This, this white line is like a minimum thickness that I've taken. But see? then that would determine also how long you're going, right? Yeah, so like now if you know, like a pad like this, you could do probably about 5-6 thousand kilometers depending on how you ride. Right. But if you come down to that 1 mm, you still can do about a thousand, fifteen hundred. But then the rider can be a little more cautious, use the brakes a little less, and save the pads a little to get to his destination before he can change. That's important and also this little bit of rocking that you see mm. is important for you to check. So I mean once you can visually come and just check, this right. means that the caliper is, is floating freely. So this, this little play has to be there, it's important to have this. So this happens, I mean this bike still new, but you will have a little more in an older case of a motorcycle. But this is important, you can see it rock, it's important to know that it's free this way. That's why it's, is it why it's called a floating caliper? Yes, the floating caliper. And the front has a floating disc. Alright. So you come to the front. These are floating discs. This is the floating disc. This disc moves here. So if you tap this thing, you will hear it making a noise. You can hear it making a noise. And here's where is the catchy part. Because, see from that side. It's when you can see the caliper from here. Can you see the caliper on there? Yes. Or if you come here, you come this side through this gap. You can also see the wear here. See, I'll point the pencil out there. This is your wear between the brake pad and the plate. This again, you can visually see here. I can probably point it from here. It's like a little tricky though. Yeah. It's a little thick. Can you see from there, the gap? Yes. 
yes, so yes, that sir. that's important for you to see that this part here this is your disc this is your pad lining and that's your plate so you need to have that much of life in it so this is again an important thing that you need to check this you will always hear a noise like this because it's the floating caliper this is your forks that you need to check importantly this part of your fork is the chrome part which you always have to keep clean when i meant cleaning this is the part that you need to clean in an upside down fork and also the back of this is very important we never clean the back because you always wipe the front right. it's always good to use like an old socks where you can put it to the back Just of the fork and clean this entire place so you don't have any dirt and dust on it like you see this dust it will always have a bit of grit on it yeah. it will always have grit like this so this is important to have it cleaned off before you ride out this is your travel area so this is important to clean then i mean in general you will always have a you know general check okay lights are loose guards right. loose right your handle guards loose check. mirrors loose yeah. just general small things like that you'll over you can just check but that's that's for your brakes part of things so you can see the fluid through the window here so it's important for you to see fluid through the brakes you will sometimes see a bubble over here which is fine because as the fluid comes down it will it will develop a bubble over here that's absolutely normal for it to do but this shows you where your brake fluid is similarly you can see the rear brakes that's your rear brake brake capacity that's your your minimum level is here your maximum level is here your brake fluid has to be in between this level so you can see it over here that's your minimum level It's your maximum level. You always have to be in between that to be safe. The color of the brake fluid looks like it's in between yellow and black. Any so that also, indication? if you see here, it's yellow. Here it looks clean. I'll show it from here. See, it looks clean like this. You'll also see sometimes when the level goes down, the the inside rubber which pressurizes will come down, so it will always look a little dark. Understood. But brake oil is something that you need to change every year. It's hydrophobic. It absorbs moisture from the air. So it's a very good practice to change it every year. Every year. Annually, make it a point to change it. Okay. Preferential uh, brake fluid. Uh, dot four. Always use a, a sealed container. Never use a container that is old. Oh, okay. okay. So But never. Put it and then I've sold it for some time. It's not. Think? It's not advisable. Understood. So it's better to buy a smaller container of oil. Use it. Finish it. Throw it. Like like the one we have. The smaller one. Right. Chain setting, yes. Chain If your setting. chain is too tight with the pillion, that you have to get it to the mechanic, get your luggage, make the pillion sit, and check your chain. You need to have a little bit of slack on that, otherwise right. you spoil the chain. Yeah. So yeah. that's important. Once load up the bike, get the pillion, take mm -hmm. it to the mechanic, right. check your chain slack, and then only ride out. That's mm -hmm. extremely important. If you're solo, it's still manageable. Right. Right. So that way. Otherwise, your general engine oil check, coolant check, right. your small checklist will you you'll have with you anyway. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just yeah. make it a mandatory thing to check hmm. brake pressure, brake oil, coolant, coolant overflow, the bar, engine oil, chain slack, whether it's looped or no, air pressure, small things like that. The rest, as you become a good motorcyclist, comes automatically. Awesome, awesome. Hmm. Uh, And knees, in case of Mark, then you need knee sliders also. Of course. Yes. Touring with knee sliders. Yeah, eh? knee sliders <laughs> and elbows because any through the mountains also he'll be knee down. We need a suit which has a lot of perforation. <laughs> yeah, if there's gas build up in the suit, then you need it. <laughs> <laughs>